Madam President, the last few weeks, my home state of Arizona has been thrust into the national spotlight. I wish I could say it's because of the success of our sports teams or the strength of our universities. Instead, it's because Arizona has become ground zero for the collapse of Obamacare, leaving most of our citizens with limited choices and higher costs when it comes to the President's signature health care law, a law that I fought against for weeks on end, which the majority then on the other side of the aisle with 60 votes without a single Republican vote, without a single Republican amendment passed into law. And the president in 2009 said, quote, if you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your plan. Nobody is talking about taking that away from you. Let me repeat the words of the president of the United States after on a strict party line basis, it passed Obamacare. Quote, if you've got health insurance, you like your doctor, you like your plan, you can keep your doctor. You can keep your plan. Nobody is talking about taking that away from you. That's a quote from the President of the United States when we passed Obamacare. He also said, if you like your health care insurance policy, you can keep your policy, period, in his own inimitable style. Ever since, ever since the passage of Obamacare, Americans have been hit by broken promise after broken promise and met with higher costs less choices, and poor quality of care. Let me read just a few of the most recent headlines addressing the collapse of Obamacare in Arizona. And I would ask that these articles be included in today's record. Without objection. Phoenix Business Journal, September 2nd, 2016. Phoenix Health Plan dumps Obama Exchange, leaves Cigna as sole carrier in Maricopa County. I would point out to my colleagues that the majority of the population of my state is in Maricopa County. Arizona Republic, August 17, 2016. Pinal County left with no ACA options as Aetna exits Arizona. Politico, August 22, 2016. The county Obama forgot. USA Today, August 30, 2016. Healthcare choices choked further. Havasu News, August 10, 2016. Obamacare consumers face higher costs in fall. Time, August 25, 2016. Aetna has revealed Obamacare's many broken promises. The Arizona Republic, August 26, 2016. Arizona consumers fret as Obamacare insurance options dwindle. The Arizona Republic, June 14, 2016. Insurers, rate seek, insurers seek rate hikes for ACA plans. Come November 1st, this will be the reality for hundreds of thousands of hardworking Arizonans currently enrolled in Obamacare. Already, United Health, Humana, Health, Health Choice Insurance Company, Aetna, and now Phoenix Health Plans have all announced they are exiting Arizona's marketplace. Up until late last night, Arizona had the dubious distinction of being home to the only county in America without a single health insurance provider offering plans in 2017. While I'm pleased that Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona decided to step in to save Pinal County from having no choices in the federal marketplace, there's no reason to believe that this is an economically viable or sustainable end result. The fact remains, this is a far cry from what President Obama promised before and after signing his signature health care reform bill into law. The mass exodus of health insurers from the Obamacare marketplace should come as no surprise to anyone. Over the last few years, these providers have reported massive financial losses as a result of their participation in the federal exchanges. United Health, for example, recently projected to lose well over $1 billion as a result of the poorly constructed Obamacare marketplace. For the insurers who continue to participate in the exchanges, their only option is to raise premium rates astronomically high in order to cover their losses. In fact, 
one of the insurers in Arizona, Maricopa County, said they're going to ask for a 65% rate increase. Copays are going up into the thousands of dollars. What's clear, what is clear, that Obamacare is crumbling and Arizonans are being left to pick up the pieces. Let me direct your attention to this map. As you can see, as it stands today, 14 of Arizona's 15 counties will have a single, that's one, a single health insurer to shop for coverage when open enrollment begins on November 1st. That includes Maricopa County, Arizona's most populous county, impacting more than 120,000 of my fellow citizens. This is down from the eight health insurers options that Maricopa County residents had in 2016. Let me repeat, in 2016, they had eight health insurers to choose from. Guess what they're gonna have in 2017? One, along with every other county in Arizona with one exception that will have two. As you can see, none have three. And up until yesterday, Pinal County was in the red. For, for some family, we're still, of those 14 counties, 13 Arizona counties will see their premiums increase on average by 51%. Their premiums will increase 13 these counties will see their premiums increase on an average by 51%. For some families, this could mean hundreds of dollars more per month out of their paychecks. I doubt, I doubt that their standard of living and their pay has increased sufficiently to cover a 51% increase in their premiums. That's why Cynthia Cox, Associate Director of Health Reform and Private Insurance at the Kaiser Family Foundation recently stated, and I quote, most other parts of the country, large cities like Phoenix have multiple insurers participating in them. Arizona is by far the most affected state when it comes to these exit. For a law that President Obama said would bring, quote, more choice, more competition, and real health care security, Obamacare has delivered nothing more than empty promises. Today, thousands of my fellow citizens are asking, what happens if the only plan being offered in my county doesn't cover my current doctor? Or the coverage is insufficient for my family's needs? Or should I, or, or should I purchase health insurance at all, given all the upheaval in the market? Well, when crafting this law, President Obama and congressional Democrats thought it would be a good idea to penalize those people who don't enroll by forcing them to pay a fine, to pay a fine if they didn't enroll. Put simply, if you don't enroll, you pay a fine. If there's a monopoly in a given county with no competition, you're penalized. Being forced to choose between a much more expensive plan and paying a fine is unconscionable. In other words, they have two choices, not paying, not accepting the one plan, or paying a fine. That's unconscionable. That's why yesterday I joined Senators Cotton, Sass, Flake, Johnson, and Barrasso in introducing legislation that would protect individuals living in a county with no competition in the federal marketplace from having to pay a penalty. These Americans should not be forced to bear the burdens of a health care system that was fatally flawed from conception. The collapse of Obamacare in Arizona and across the country confirms what Republicans have warned all along. Government mandated health care is unsustainable. Now that the law is unraveling, it's no surprise that Democrats are clamoring for a so-called public option. It is nothing more than government-run health care. If anything is clear about this failed law, it's that more government intervention is the wrong solution to fixing our health care system. This failed law will only continue to place undue burdens 
on Arizona families unless we repeal and replace Obamacare with real reform that encourages competition and empowers patients to make their own health care decisions. I'll continue to push for this bill with Senator Perdue that would do just that. Replace Obamacare with common sense solutions that empower patients and doctors, not the government, to take back control of their health care. Until then, hardworking Americans will continue to bear the consequences of a failed Obamacare. 